All right, here we are on the second last page. We're going to, yeah, that's where we are. We're going to start with number 24. A, it says evaluate. And so evaluate can mean anything as simple as punch it into the calculator. Or uh, if you want to show your work, which you're supposed to do here, uh, we can do that. So for A, the base is negative 64. It's in brackets, so that's the whole base, to the power of 2 thirds. We could write that 3 is on the bottom side, so that's the index of a radical. We could write that like this, the cube root of negative 64 squared. And the reason that I did that was because back here, we had a 4 that was in the cube root, and 4 cubed is 64. So if I was going to be really fast, I might take... Uh, these guys and these guys all in one step and say, hey, I'm going to divide 1280 by all the perfect cubes I know, like 64. And in the end, I would get 64 times 20. And 64 times 20 is 1280, and that's much faster if I wanted to do that faster. So since I've noticed that in the last question, I'm going to say, okay, the cube root of negative 64 is negative four. So the cube root of negative 64 is negative four. Negative four times negative four times negative four is negative 64. And I still got to square it. Negative four squared is four times four is 16. Negative times negative is positive. It's 16. So the answer for A is going to just be 16. I'm going to erase it so I got room to write for my next guys. For B, we've got this big mess, we could try it a whole bunch of different ways. We could try applying that 16 to both of those exponents. But before I do that, I'm going to try to notice some things. I try to like glance at the problem, see if there's something that will save me some time or effort. And I do notice that these two bases are the same. That's important. I do notice that these two exponents are the same, except for one is negative and one is positive. And that's good to know, too. I also noticed that 4 over 2 is a really dumb way to write an exponent, isn't it? 4 over 2 is just 2. 4 divided by 2 is 2. Why wouldn't I write 2 and negative 2 for my exponents? It's just easier to think about. So if I have negative something, negative 3 64ths, I'll just say, like, okay, I have some, some variable. I'll call it, I don't know, q. That's this. If I have q squared times q to the negative 2, I'm ignoring this exponent for right now. And I'm ignoring what these actual numbers are right now. I'm just saying, like, this is the, very, the, the shape. Then I've got a q here, q squared here, and this one belongs on the bottom side of the fraction. Whatever this number is, in this case it's negative 3 64 but it doesn't really matter, Whatever this number is, anything divided by itself is 1. So inside this whole fraction, I mean, sorry, inside this whole bracket here, this times the reciprocal of itself, anything times the reciprocal of itself is divided by itself, is just 1. And now if I take 1 to the power of 16, well, that's 1 times 1 times 1 a whole bunch of times, which is just 1. So we could have done through this, this a more uh, painful looking way, but instead, that way is nicer. For number 25, we want to simplify this. Here, I'm going to do the thing that I didn't do on the last problem, which is just apply that negative 4 to everybody right off the start. So I've got 3 quarters, and that's going to be to the negative 4. I've got m to the negative 3 times negative 4. Negative 3 times negative 4 is positive 12. I've got n to the negative 7 times negative 4. That's positive 28. And I've got p to the negative 2 times negative 4. 2 times 4 is 8, and negative times negative is still positive. So m, n, and p are already nice. And all I have to do is deal with this 3 quarters to the negative 4. 3 quarters to the negative 4 
is the same as 4 thirds to the fourth power. The negative sign means flip that. And that's 4 times 4 times 4 times 4, and 4 to the fourth power is 256. And 3 times 3 times 3 times 3, and 3 to the fourth power is 81. So instead of this 3 quarters to the negative 4, I'll just actually take it through and say, okay, that's all worth 256 over 81. So I have 256 over 81 times m to the 12, n to the 8, p to the 8. And that's all I can do with that. For question 26, simplify and write with positive exponents. For the first one, I have this that I need to send out to all of its players there. So I have 3 to the negative 2, p to the negative 2, and q to the negative 6 times negative 2, which is positive 12. And over here I have p to the negative 1, and q to the 3. So 3 to the negative 2, just for the number part, 3 to the negative 2 is the same as 1 over 3 squared, which is the same as 1 over 9. So I'm going to write 1 over 9 off to the side here somewhere. So I don't I remember what's going on with that number part. 1 over 9. For the p's, I've got p to the negative 2 and p to the negative 1. That's p to the negative 2 plus negative 1, p to the negative 3. So I want to put my p cubed on the bottom. p to the negative 3 means that there are 3 p's and they belong on the bottom. And for the q terms, I've got 12 and 3, both positives. So I have q to the 12 plus 3, which is 15. So I have a ninth times q to the 15 over p cubed. And I can not write that 1 if I like. I can write this is q to the 15 over 9p cubed. Uh, and this will be my answer for 26a. For 26b, we've got a kind of a big mess here. I'm going to deal with this and then this. So I'm just going to deal with one bracket at a time. So for my first bracket, x to the quarter to the negative 5 over y cubed. I'm going to take that negative. It's the only negative exponent in this whole deal, so I just wanted to get that flipping out of the way before I do anything else. And that's all to the power of 5. Now I'm going to multiply that 5 by 3 and that 5 by a quarter. So I get y to the 15 and x to the 5 quarters. So that's this first bracket simplified as much as I can right now. The second bracket, x to the 8th squared over y to the 15th. I just have y to the 15th, that's easy. And x to the 8th squared, that's 2 times an 8th, which is... Uh, two eighths or one quarter. Two times one eighth is two eighths, and two eighths simplifies to one quarter. So now these two are being multiplied together. This is from the first bracket, this is from the second bracket, and y to the 15 and y to the 15, this and this, well, they should cancel out, shouldn't they? So they do. Anything divided by itself is one. And all I have left is x to the 1 quarter on top and 5 quarters on the bottom. So 1 quarter minus 5 quarters is negative 4 quarters. Negative 4 quarters is negative 1. It, I want positive exponents, so I'm going to write 1 over x. And that will be my answer for B, which I think we can agree is much nicer than what we started out with. And again, the route that I'm taking through a problem doesn't have to be the same as the route you take through the problem, as long as you understand what you're up to. Last question on this page. 
write three quarters to the five sixths as a radical. So three quarters is the base. Writing it as a radical, I take the bottom, so the denominator, and I make it the index. And I take the top one, I make that an exponent still. So I have the sixth root of three quarters to the fifth power. If I wanted to um, do three quarters to the fifth power, I could say this is the sixth root of uh, 243 and what's four to the fifth power? 1024, I guess. I don't really think that that's any nicer, but these are equivalent to each other. So this one would be good or that one would be good. And I'll stop the recording to do the last page.